Hi everybody. Oh. On the show today we caught up with a gold medalist Jakara Anthony and the phone line cut out a couple of times but we persisted. Yeah, we, we thought they were constantly insulting her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which could happen actually. Yes. Um, we are talking to people that should have calmly approached the situation but they panicked, <laughs> freaking out the door just opened to the studio. That's so. just Amy getting the knives and forks. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Thanks Amy. Um. <laughs> Uh, we also <laughs> discussed. Don't even, um, don't even com- ex- explain that properly. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah I wasn't listening. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> and I was talking. We talked to parents about hating their children's pets. Okay, and, yeah. and we also discuss um, excuses people use to meet their partner. Actually, they're oh, very good. When they engineer the situation, mm. there's some rippers there. This is Nathan, Nat, and Sean. So that Nick would be curious. Nick curious. <laughs> okay. Nick curious. Super segue. Yes. What do you mm-hmm. think Natalie is an attractive man? Uh, would you go there? Would you go there? Look, I don't. I, his attitude puts me off a bit, so I find that mm. I don't know. But because of his profile, he's on a world stage all the time. You know, he's not the worst looking dude so in the world. So Sean would go yeah. there. And I Sorry. don't. And I'm with you now. I don't. I don't really particularly like yeah. him at all. But I can imagine him being attracted to a few. People. He, he he seems to have quite a deal of success with the ladies. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. He can he can he get them, but then they seem to they can't stick around. Seem to fight That'd be because a lot of the poisonous personality. The, put it on the Instagrams. <laughs> So his uh, girlfriend, Costine, uh, she was talking about how they met, right? You don't, so she you don't meet it. enough Costines in no, the world. You no. don't. Yeah, um, she whacked it on her socials. So she said it all started with a mirror that she'd advertised for sale online. He was apparently scrolling through um, my Insta and saw my business account uh, where there was a selfie of her in the mirror. He messaged his biz- her business about asking if the mirror was available for pickup because she was selling it and then messaged her personal account asking the same thing. She said he then turned up at her house, but interestingly enough, Sean, mm-hmm. wasn't interested in the mirror. All he wanted to do was ask her out instead. Now, I so thought he he'd on- be really interested in a mirror. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said it was all, it was a professional friendly conversation and then he came to pick up the mirror from Sydney. I had no idea that that was a, a, all a plan. I literally thought that he was buying a mirror. Now, so he was just, he went, there's a hot girl. I want to meet her. So I'm going to say, so hey, I'm going to pretend I'm interested, I'm interested in, in your mirror. mirror and I'm going to rock up there. You know? I mean, I, if it wasn't Nick Kyrgios and it was just someone that wasn't that attractive, she would have called the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? mo- mo- most definitely. Hands down. But it does bring me to, I feel like a lot of people would have had a made up an excuse or a plan or created a situation. Sort of engineered the meeting Engineered somehow, a meeting. And made it seem like it's charm. They saw someone. Yeah. And they went like, wait there, I, will, I, will, I want that. Mm. And they've put something in mm. place. To get there, do you reckon how many times? Do you reckon that's happens? Do you reckon that happens? Oh I mean, no, doubt I mean, about it. Yes. no doubt about it. Costine and Nick. Costine. I mean, <laughs> the Nick and Costine love story. The Nick and Costine. <laughs> but what do you think? Was there a really hot um, uh, photocopier? What are they called? Fixer. No, oh, look, you've got to stretch. What are they called? What are they called? What are they called? Photocopier. Uh, Tech. Tech. Oh, they, so you like ram so you some. Keep jamming the photocopier and then he turns up. some hard cardboard into the yeah. To the feeder. Oh, that sounds <laughs> <laughs> got sexy pretty fast, didn't it, Nathan? <laughs> and then there was, about your then there was ink everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me wipe that toner off oh, you. Oh, <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> what have you been watching on the internet? You need to make it. You need to write an adult novel. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to what if it. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, Select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if it's Aussie for travel? Check government advisories before booking and travelling. So we are talking about when you've engineered a meeting. Yes. So like Nick uh, Kyrgios and his now girlfriend, Costine, yeah. he inquired about a mirror she had for sale, went around to supposedly look at the mirror. He yeah. was not interested in looking at no, the mirror. No, he wasn't. He was interested in Costine. Yes, Ooh. he was. Wendy's in Marangaroo. Hello, Wendy. Hi, guys. How are you going? Great, Good, Wendy. Wendy. Have you like? done this? Has this been done to you? Uh, I've been the culprit, yes. the, uh, yes. the instigator. I changed softball club to go to the softball club where my now fiancé coaches. <laughs> oh. Is that right? So you, like, when you were playing against them, you went, looked over and went, oh, hello, that's a bit of all right. I might switch teams. Yeah, pretty much. And I changed clubs, changed uniforms, changed everything. And, um... Seven years later, we're still together. Oh, oh, hey, oh. Wendy. Hey, Wendy, apart from um, laying your eyes on her at that period of time, did you have any conversations before? Uh, 
Well, it turns out like it's like three degrees of separation. We had known each other previously because both our kids went to the same scout camp and things like yes. that. But yeah, just never, never got to talking. Wow, wow, that's a big move, isn't I it? I know. Wow. It's a big commitment to switch, you know, softball yes. teams. Yeah, oh, mate. New got, uniform. Uniform costs a lot. you got to buy new socks. Uniform costs a lot. <laughs> that is so I don't true. know the rock going rate of a softball uniform, but I'm going to say it's 100. Was it, was it a dramatic change? What colours did we, what club did we go from and to? We went from black and white to red, white and blue. Oh, oh see, no, that's no, a dramatic a change. Lot. That it's is a lot. a lot. Well, that's, you know, that's a risk. But, you know, sometimes you've got to take a risk for love, Nathan. It's worked out. It's worked Thanks, out. Wendy. It's worked Beautiful out. love story. Hello, Simon. Hello, how you doing? Yeah, good, Simon. mate. All right, okay. engineering a meet. What happened? Um, I used to work for the RSPCA as a maintenance officer, so it's the yes. other way around. But um, my now wife was the dog training coordinator, and um, I used to try and create work in her office to <laughs> go and uh, spend some time with her, like uh, punch holes in the wall by accident <laughs> or uh, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, jeez, I need to be back like, tomorrow. Jeez, Look the wall's this. really copper beating in this office, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pr- try and put like some uh, some anchor screws into the wall and push a little bit too hard so the hole goes through. Yeah, and then I'd have to patch it and repair it and sand it back and make sure it's all nicely painted. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm we're now we're now married and um, so it works. Yeah, so success. Yeah, well, <laughs> do you do any jobs around the house now yeah. at all, Simon? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, just checking. Um, yeah, I definitely do. Still yeah, do the work yeah, for her. Yeah, when he feels like she's not paying enough attention, he just drives the car through the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We are talking about engineering a meeting, creating a scenario so that you can uh, get some face-to-face time with somebody that you think's a little bit cute. wonder if Chelsea's done this before. Chelsea would have done it for sure. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, how are you going? Great Good, Chels. Chels. What happened? Good. Um, oh, happy birthday for yesterday, Sean. Oh, thank you, Chels. Happy birthday, Sean. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. We've, we've moved on. Birthday's gone. Thank you. <laughs> oh, bring it yes. down, girl. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> okay, so I um, used to be a dancer. Um, I worked at corporate events all around Perth. Yeah. And um, one gig, uh, we needed a guy um, to wear, like, no shirt with a waistcoat over the top. It was for a, an event at the um, at the Crown. Yes. And did Sean say um, yes? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was, we had, like, heaps of girls who were dressed as showgirls and things like that. And I knew this guy, and I was like, right, I know he's pretty decent. So mm-hmm. I got all of the girls, and me, me and one of the other ones, um, I was single, but she was taken. Yeah. So I put me and her downstairs, and I put him opposite us. And I put all the hot single ones upstairs so that he couldn't see any of them. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. And did it work, Chels? <laughs> it did. We're married and we've now got two kids. Oh, oh amazing. Right, all right, let's yes. take all their way that, Yes, get the, the competition out of the way. Chels, is, is, it, is it such a hard commitment for this scenario? Because I'm guessing every time you go into a room, you have to remove all the hot girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know what? The funny thing is, is that the story he tells is that the first time we ever met, we were naked in the same room because we had to get changed into our costumes. And yes. he was like, what is happening right now? This is the best day and of then life I was like, yeah. yeah, and I was like, okay, you guys all can go that way. And then we just stayed in the room and just chatted. <laughs> and, and then I, I had another gig later on and he was like, where are you going now? And I was like, oh, um, we're just going the to one of the ballrooms. And he was like, oh, okay, do you need any guards for that? And I was like, nah, sorry, this is a, this is a girl. What? Oh, put him on the back burner. Well, because you hooked him already. Yeah, that's right. right. You yeah, kept Chelsea. him wanting more. Oh, well done, Chelsea. All the hot girls. Get all the hot girls out of the way. Jamie's in Ellenville. Hello. Uh, hi. Hi, Jamie. Jamie. Jamie, what did you do to engineer a meeting? Um, so I'm a, a basketball referee, and I was refereeing one night during the week, and I saw this really cute guy over on another court. Um, so I went to my friend who was doing the roster and I asked if we could be put on all of the same games for the rest of the night. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, and we did and we got chatting and then we rest all of the same games for the rest of the week and uh, now we're married. Oh, oh, this has happened a fair bit. Oh, yes. Guys, this is what you got to do. This yeah. is where we're going into the wrong. Mix. We're what? not refereeing basketball. I, sure, I, don't know. I don't know. The rules well enough to be um, able to call the shots. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, are, uh, we, are we taking the right message out of these stories? So, okay, Jamie, did you let... Were you a fair referee to the game? 
Um, I maybe wasn't a very concentrated. Bit, bit distracted. <laughs> a little bit distracted, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long did it take? Um, five, five games. Six, I think six months actually until we started dating. We yes. Every game together for the six months. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Nathan, Dad, and Sean. Sean, talk to me about your children's pets over the years. Take Rex out of them. Mm-hmm. I take Rex out of there. We've had a couple of fish that have gone by the wayside, mm-hmm. of course, because once they get them and they're desperate for mm-hmm. them, then all of a sudden no one cares. Yeah. And then we had the guinea, the plague of the guinea pig, <laughs> which was, we said personally, oh, no, we had the chickens as well. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. Um, and they were... Anyway, Rex got along really well with the chickens, too well, in fact. I thought they were yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they decided their new house was inside of Rex. Yeah, <laughs> and then we moved on to the um, the guinea pigs. And, of course, um, for some reason, the missus decided that it was okay if we got a female guinea pig to go to the male pig, guinea pig, which is named Michael Jackson. Does she understand the birds and yeah. the bees? Well, she... She didn't think of that applied to guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah, apparently, and next thing you know, obviously, that that's Four the kids. one thing that they do do, <laughs> guinea pigs, and yeah. next thing you know, we had guinea pigs up the wazoo, Nathan. My brother that's and what I... we were supposed to put them. We would save our money, and then we would go to Anne's Pet Supplies on the way home oh, from yes, school, and Anne's. we would pick up um, uh, guinea pigs, which were $2 each, mm. um, um, and I think it was a dozen for 10. <laughs> 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 a dozen is a lot. <laughs> Some bargain was there. Well, it makes sense. Anyway, so we were just like continuously bringing guinea pigs home and like chucking them in the hatch. And then, Kids um, always want guinea pigs and they never yeah, look after yeah, them because you've got to clean out the cages anyway, a lot yeah. or, you so, know, they, it stinks. Mm. So we didn't really know too much about the welfare and what, what, what guinea pigs are up to but um, and all their breeding. It's more concerned with the price, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 <laughs> bargain. Um, and then they just started breeding and there was mum thought there was rats in the cage and there was just, we had, and then at the end we had thousands and thousands of guinea pigs. We had guinea pigs in the walls. We had guinea pigs in the roof. <laughs> there were guinea pigs everywhere. Let me bring you to hamsters. We don't really do hamsters No, they're, here, they're do similar, similar mm. vibe to guinea yeah, pigs. Yeah, yeah. How's this? Humans can catch COVID from pet hamsters. That was the lo- likely cause of a Delta outbreak in Hong Kong. That's crazy. Isn't that it? Delta outbreak, they're pretty sure it was from hamsters. Were the hamsters Are eating serious? pangolins? What was going on? Amazing. <laughs> After a 22-year-old pet store uh, worker tested positive to COVID on January 15, researchers collected viral swabs and blood samples from animals in the pet shop and the warehouse supplying it. There had been no locally acquired infections with the Delta variant since October. The study, which is yet to be peer-reviewed, found more that half of the Syrian hamsters in the pet shop, there was eight out of 16, (laughs) and the warehouse, seven out of 12, were positive. None of the other animals, including the dwarf hamsters, rabbits, guinea pigs, chinchillas and mice, were infected. Just the hamsters from Syria. Yes, (laughs) the Syrian hamsters. Imported into Singapore. Hong Kong. Hong Are you Kong Syrian, they said? Mm. Mm. Uh, this is unbelievable. So imagine that your child has brought home a hamster or you've gotten a hamster of your child, which you resent straight away because you know you're going to be looking after Correct. it. Yeah, you do. And then it gave you COVID. You'd hate that pet's <laughs> guts. <laughs> oh, you'd yeah, hate it. Massively. Did you ever have any warm feelings towards the guinea pigs, Sean? Never, ever. Never. Nath, um, they took up the... Uh, we have a tiny balcony. I can't uh, believe no Megan let this happen. They live there and they just... Pooed all over the place. Yeah, they that's... made an absolute stench and they ran around the joint when no, they got she, she lets time. you live there, so it's no, fine. It's what are you talking about? They're living on the balcony every night with sunset drinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, having a great time. They were like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. Being a parent is hard mm. and when your children want pets and animals in their lives, sometimes yep. you go, yeah, what a great idea. And then you realise you have to do all the work and you come to resent that animal. Imagine the parents in Hong Kong that went and bought their child a pet hamster and then found out that it caused that COVID outbreak. <laughs> Hamsters give you COVID. <laughs> you hate that pet. Indeed. Justine's in Safety Bay. Hello. Hi. How are you today? Oh, good, good, Justine. Justine. Do you hate your kids' animals? Yes, I do. They have axolotls mm. all because <laughs> Minecraft has them. And they're both autistic, and they decided that they needed it and had to have it. Yes. And now I look after it and have to feed it, and I forget to. And if it dies, I'm the one that's in trouble. Yes. The worst oh, thing yes. about Max Lottles is you have to walk them too, don't you? <laughs> no, they, they don't. That's what we thought. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Okay. What do you mean? They're just in they, a little tank. They're yeah. in water. Yeah. They're in a tank in a water, mm. and you have to clean it all the time because their poo doesn't degrade or anything like that, so you have to scoop it out Filthy every animals. single day. Oh, so, so your kids, I didn't realise they featured heavily in Minecraft. 
Um, oh, yeah, they are. There was a big, massive thing about them about a couple of months ago. Oh, hey. Great, great. Well, the axolotl insult. breeders must have paid off Minecraft. Oh, to put yeah, them in yeah, there, I reckon. Oh, wow. Ugh, nice uh, week. Thanks, First Justine. time we've had someone come on our show and say they hate axolotls. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany's in high wick. Am I, Brett? Good morning. Hi, Hi Brett. Brett. Do you hate your kids' animal? I do, and I hate my husband more for it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, my children come home with once a week wanting a different pet, <laughs> and I'll have a short 10 second discussion with my husband about it, mm-hmm. and it's a firm. No. Yep. My husband then takes that, goes out next day on his own, unsupervised, comes home with this animal. <laughs> your husband, husband is unsupervised. Just, you know, your husband is constantly the hero, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> he is the and hero. Like just do everything. always yeah. the bad yeah. guy. Yeah. So let's run through some of Every the things that he's brought home as surprises. Um, he has brought home two baby goats. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm okay, that's it, next level. I thought it was fish. Yes. Um, all right, so two baby goats. Two early goats. We've had three chickens. Yep. Um, we've had two rabbits, only one still alive. Mm-hmm. We've had about like 10 budgies on like every two. They've got to rotate because they all die at the same time. So we've just rotated. <laughs> what are you through. doing? You're supposed to feed these things. You know <laughs> exactly. that? Exactly. Oh, it's hard to kill a budgie. Animal. Why aren't the animals talking to each other and go, don't go with him? Okay, there's <laughs> don't a, go a, with him. It's a heavy toll at your house. <laughs> okay, what else? Um, We've had about four dogs. I flat out refused to have a cat. Yeah. Um, and we've had a frog. We've had, oh, they started off as tadpoles, then the garage turned yep. into a oh, yeah, giant yeah. thing full of frogs. <laughs> um, and just, he just brings home dumb shit all the time. Yeah. <laughs> There's Brittany, no way to if, sugarcoat that, is it, Brett? <laughs> if one of your kids doesn't become a vet, then you you have every right to be very, very annoyed oh, with this situation. Oh Which one do you hate the most, the historically? Moment, Who have you hated the most? At the moment, the only one that is still living, we have a rabbit, but it's not going to be living for very long because last week um, we have we just bought a brand new couch and it's got electric recliners in it <laughs> and it plugs into the wall. And the rabbit, when my son lets it out of the cage, it doesn't like the wood floors. So it only stays on the rug and then it doesn't like children. So it hides under the couch. Uh-huh. So it chewed the cord to my couch. Oh, oh. oh the electric couch. And when I turned the couch on, it short settled my house, short circuited <laughs> my entire house. Oh my oh, god! Geez, Brittany, the house is going to burn so down so if you keep these so animals. Short. We need to rehome that rabbit immediately. Thanks, Brittany. Oh, that poor rabbit. I love how it hates children. <laughs> Do you think that rabbit oh. just went under there and knew what the electric cord yeah, was yeah, like? I need to end, to it end all. this situation. <laughs> Thanks, Brittany. Jess is in Byford. Hello. Good morning, guys. How oh, are we? Oh, good, God. Jess. Oh, that one, Jess. Tough being a parent, isn't it, Jess? <laughs> it does. Good luck to the bunny, by the way. Yeah, I know. Um, good luck. Yeah, but, um, I mean, crazy crabs. Oh, my yes, kids. Been for yeah, I don't know then. how many times. Oh. <laughs> um, they're so appealing. They paint, you know, nice, shells, pretty yes. decorations. <laughs> yeah. Just but, because... um, yeah, the kids, you know, obviously can't keep them in the tank. They've got to take them out yeah. and then yeah. get distracted. Where's the crazy crab? And it's we've just... got cats, unfortunately. Oh, and, oh, no. um, yeah, so. No, if you dried out crusty crabs <laughs> um, <Sean's been> <laughs> behind the curtains. <laughs> Fly spray. Fly spray. Behind the curtain, more or else they're going to be. Fly spray, I reckon. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. Much to Nathan's disgust. I'm going to stay away from the cricket because I know you've been invested Whoa. heavily. There's nothing here for me. See you later. <laughs> what I'm going to talk about, though, is the NBA. There's a bit of oh, a... Oh, NBA. Sorry, no. Let's do it. There's a bit of a trade period happening at the moment. I believe it finishes uh, the next it's not interested. 24 <laughs> hours. And uh, I want to talk about Australian Joe Ingalls. Oh, yes. And Australian Joe Ingalls, mm. uh, they call him Slow Mo Joe. He's been playing for the Utah Jazz for eight seasons now. It, it well loved, actually yes. loved around the league. Yeah, loved Jingles. Loved. Uh, and um, he's in the last year of his contract at $18 million for this season. And he blew his knee just about five or six days ago. Mm. Did oh. his knee. So did so, he still get his money? Well, what happens? Today, as of about half an hour ago, he just got traded to the Portland Blazers, Trailblazers. On one leg. <laughs> 
<laughs> with a they blown out knee. They out the team. He's hopefully we come back and play next year. But, you know, an ACL injury is going to take him all of the year yeah. to be able to play next year. So I, so I, he's blown his knee, right? So I understand why his team's going, well, you know, well, let's get rid of him. But why would the another team take him? Do they give him a bundle of other stuff? They must have been given a yes, massive like discount. PlayStation. I know, but what a blow, though. You've State just, knives. You've just blown your knee. You're like Your season's over. You're playing for a very yep. good team. You're having a great year. You yep. love the... The yes, business or the and you've been there a long time. Place. The only NBA team you've played for. Yeah, but but are you still getting eighteen million dollars? I would think so. Oh, well, I'm the opposite. Yeah, that eases the pain. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean, like, But I mean, anywhere. he's now got to pack up his house with a bundle. Uh, oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, but then you well, can't like kneeling you can down, wrapping the, things. You can pay for the top class removalist, can't what, you? How? Go straight, yeah. <laughs> with the eighteen million. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I just think that would be that would be hilarious. You're sitting down there, all these things are happening. You're just trying to get your head around not playing yeah. and doing your knee. You've got to go house hunting, and then you get traded. That's very funny. Portland's a nice town, though. Is it? I'm yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fun hipster kind of vibe in okay. Portland. Yeah. Oh, okay, it'll be good mm. for slow mojo. Ben mm-hmm. Simmons hasn't found a place yet. They were looking at the Sacramento Kings at one stage, but now over the last 24 hours I was speaking about uh, a big-time trade with James Harden, yeah. who's a top class player. They call him the beard. He's got the big beard. He's an unbelievable player, plays for the Brooklyn Nets, and he may be a trade, a traded is what they're saying on the NBA apps at the moment. Moving sports over to the F1 and Lando Norris, who's the teammate of Great Daniel name. Ricciardo, mm. just signed a $94 million contract. If you have children <laughs> right now, get them down to the go truck, go kart track. <laughs> That's where they start, Nate. Get them down there. Make sure they've got a winning smile. <laughs> yeah. Make sure Fix they're marketable. If your kid's not marketable, don't worry about it. I mean, yeah. they're going to have And I mean, look up. at them critically. Yeah. No, yeah look like, at them go, oh, yeah. I don't know. You're all like, I love my child. There's no they're child They're perfect better. in every way. Like, cut the crap. You know if your kid's a winner or not. Or send us a photo and we'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. oh, what a great segment. <laughs> where we say how good your kid you is. You say segment. For I real. say service. <laughs> like, just service to the people. We're going to charge for it. How good is that? $94 million. So Daniel Ricciardo's paid about $17 million a season. I think Ooh. Lando's ends up being something around the $25 million mark Ooh. a year. So there you go. It so, shows where so does he Daniel's become the, in that pecking the order. number one driver then? I would think so. So that's Ooh. just his. That's just what they're paying him and then on top of that endorsement deal. Yeah, sure. I would think so, that. yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. It's a lot of money. I'd do it for a year. No, I've seen it. the way you drive. I don't think you've got it in yet. No. <laughs> but would you like, I mean, are you, I yes. mean of course you would I do mean, it for yeah. ages. But yeah. like, imagine just going, okay, I'll work for a year and then. Live so bloody comfortably. Yeah, well, it's like for the rest it's of like winning couple, lotto, but you just got to work for there's one. There's been day. a couple of uh, those uh, F1 drivers, Nate, who have pulled out probably about low 30s mm. and just gone, no, nah, I've done enough. Oh, why yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, Sean? big time. I, I don't want to put my life on the line anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just go home and spend my money. Yeah. yeah. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Let me tell you a tale. Okay. Yes. About a girl named Elisa. She's 25 years young. Mm-hmm. She was at home minding her own business, and then she noticed a huntsman spider in her bedroom up on the roof, mm. up on the ceiling. And you know what happens when you are not happy with the existence of spiders? For Natalie, it's snakes. Yes. Something that freaks you out a little yes. bit. Yeah, yeah. You can't be in that, you can't live in that world with it no. being there. No, I agree. So she did what most people do and she got um, some bug spray and yes. she got up on her bed and she sprayed it until it was wet. <laughs> 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 it's like a tsunami for it. It's going to drown it. <laughs> grabbed it. It was on top of a wardrobe trying to <laughs> get its family to safety. Um, the huntsman did not like this and it leapt towards her. <laughs> <laughs> That's one ballsy huntsman, isn't it? It's like, yeah. I'm going to go into yeah. the danger. Yeah. yeah. So Elisa freaked out, all right, and she leapt off her bed. Unfortunately... She landed on a seven centimetre high heel, which became embedded <laughs> inside her left foot. She impaled herself on her own high heel. <laughs> I showed you guys the photo. It's, it's an amazing. amazing photo. So tell us what happened with the high heel too, Nath. Um, so she was rushed to hospital and she underwent surgery to have it removed, right? So she initially asked her housemate to remove the 1.5 centimetre wide <laughs> high heel from her foot. But she obviously refused. Once pa- paramedics arrived, um, they wrapped the shoe to her foot. Yes. Um, and then they carried her downstairs and loaded her, loaded her into the ambulance. It's now. good advice if you ever yes. do impale yeah, yeah, yourself. Don't pull the yeah, thing out. Yeah. 
Everyone at the hospital was just so amazed that I managed to punch in my foot with a heel that thick, she yes. said. <laughs> she must have really landed That's on it with force. some force. Yeah. They were like, well done, you've done a good job. <laughs> uh, so she got it stitched up, all that sort of stuff, was on crutches for a while and she's recovering. But that is unbelievable. But then she had to go home to a bedroom where she doesn't know where that spider is. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> It just the spiders just lounging on her bed. Oh, <laughs> You're back, dead. are you? It's yeah. on his phone using a charger. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you if you can get freaked out by something, yes. and a lot of people are freaked out by mm. bugs and stuff like mm. that. Some people it's birds. Mm. Some people it's snakes. The best thing to do is approach the situation in a calm manner, because if you freak out mm. too much. Mm. Things like this can happen. It's easily mm. said, more easily it said is, than done, Nathan. Is, when, a, when a huntsman is flying at your face. You're right. And it's angry because you've just right. soaked it in more tea. Yeah, and it's got its fist. <laughs> it's going to do one of those action movie punches. You would punches. panic too. Well, yeah! <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. So we heard the story of a very unlucky girl who panicked when a spider leapt at her after she'd sprayed it with bug spray. Yeah. It didn't like that. No. Uh, she panicked, jumped off the bed and landed on her upturned stiletto heel, which was then <laughs> deeply embedded mm. in her foot. Oh. Just another deeply. reason why women should wear sensible heels. Yeah, that's true. Yes. That's true. So we're talking about why you should be calm when you are being freaked out because panic can sometimes lead to dangerous consequences. Ray's in Busso. Morning, Ray. Morning, how you going? Hey, Ray. Ray. Okay, what happened when you panicked? Um, so one morning I was out feeding the horses and um, sometimes when you're feeding the horses they get a little bit upset and they get into a bit of a tussle with each other. Yes. And obviously I did not stay calm and I freaked out and I ran to jump over the fence and I got stuck in the electric fence. Oh! oh stuck oh, in Just it. getting zapped constantly. <laughs> like a mozzie. Zap, <laughs> zap, zap. <laughs> How was that, Ray? Because I've been uh, sh- uh, shocked by an electric fan. Yeah, it's not me fun. me too. Well, yeah, no, it wasn't, wasn't very good. I was trying to get out, and then obviously, like, every two seconds, you get the yes. old bang. <laughs> it's not very good, very pleasant. You can picture it, can't you? I, I most certainly I can. can. I can uh, feel Ray, it. Ray, how long do you think you're in this situation for, being constantly electrocuted? Um, yeah, I, could, I couldn't tell you, really. Yeah. Oh, because you lost consciousness. Too, I, I would say <laughs> too long. <laughs> Whatever too long the time was. Yeah. Thanks, Ray. Craig's in Mundaring. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hey, Hi, Craig. Craig. What happened when you panicked? So I used to live in England and uh, I was late for uh, my school bus at one point. Yes. And it was a winter morning, so obviously very, very cold. And I was partially dressed for school. <laughs> um, so I had my socks on, but not shoes yet. And I was running around panicking because the bus was about to leave. Now, most houses in England have wooden floors and glass doors. So oh. on a cold morning with socks on, I decided to take a little bit of a tumble because I was rushing around and my head went through our glass door. Oh, You nearly geez, decapa- decapitated Greg. yourself. Uh, not quite. I got a lovely scar from it, though. Oh. Did you whereabouts and how many stitches? It's very Harry Potter. Um, yeah, pretty much Harry Potter spot. So just at the top of my hairline, yeah. I've got a nice about three centimetre scar. Yeah. Um, but no stitches. Doctors just use glue. Oh, Harry well, Potter yeah. was lucky enough to have a lightning. Greg's, unfortunately, yes. is the shape of a doodle. <laughs> 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 Look, you can't help it. You know, you never know how it's going to turn out. It's true. Good, good work, it? Greg. Thank you. Simon's in Bindoon. Morning, Simon. Morning. How are you going? Hey, good, good Simon. Mate. Okay. What happened when you panicked? Oh, well, so a, a few years ago now, I was at home by myself, fairly young. Yeah. And I turned around and was in the kitchen and there was someone standing in the kitchen behind me. Oh. So I freaked out and gone to run the other way and I think I've hit my head and, yeah, knocked myself out. Yeah. Then I've woken up and obviously... You know, a few things are missing and this person's nowhere to be seen. <gasps> oh, so yeah. it's a so full-on robber. Getting and you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've sighted the robber and just run into and something knocked and knocked yourself out. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah. And now they're like, oh, that works out well. Let's clear this joint out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it turned out pretty well because obviously I don't remember too much of it. So Yeah, no trauma, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Did you check if you had a sore backside? So I know, Sean. The worst thing you do is look down your flies under. It's like, oh, my God. Well, they took my innocence too. <laughs> Oh, they certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Well, we're all certainly loving the Winter Olympics and the reason why is because we have an Australian champion, a gold yeah, medalist, in fact. Jakara Anthony, who's touched down back in Melbourne just over the last 24 hours. She is a champion. Good morning, Jakara. Good morning. 
Chikara. <laughs> Chikara. So, so good. What I love about the Winter Games is the fact that it happens at Ikea. You see people walking around Ikea and they're all going, oh, that would go fantastically with this over there. And they suddenly become interior designers. Whereas we are all now skiing and mogul experts. <laughs> <laughs> Just from watching it. Um, and you know, my, my dear, you had some really good runs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's it like being back in Australia? We've, just We've lost out. her. I thought that was like... I thought she, she, she just, just didn't like, like, like your pondering question. On the question. No, it's very Scott Morrison, isn't mm. it? Mm. He just mm. like... When? Oh, that you know what that that was our interview with Jakara Anthony. <laughs> that was our gold medalist. <laughs> we definitely had her on the show. We definitely you can't did. deny or did it. We? <laughs> or is that just Claire <laughs> in the other room putting on a <laughs> <laughs> putting on a gold medalist well, voice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought Claire could have done it. Okay. And Jakara. that was the shortest interview ever with Jakara. No, we think we might have her back, Jakara. Jakara. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Kara. Oh. Okay, thank you so much for being on the show. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jakara, Nathan was just telling, t- uh, asking before about the fact that we all th- think we're specialists, Experts. being lounge room specialists, watching you do the uh, moguls. How's it, ha- preparation for you over the last, um, well, how long have you been doing it for, 10 years or so? Oh, I've been doing mogul skiing since I was probably about 10, so that's about, what, 13 years now, so oh. quite a while. That's your needs. <laughs> now, yeah, Jakara, that's what I was going to ask. There's a lot of things you can do on skis and snowboards and stuff. Yes. You pick the one that looks like your knees are going to blow out at any given moment. <laughs> Why did you pick moguls? Uh, I think it looks a lot worse than it actually really? is. Um, yeah. Uh, moguls, it just really stuck out to me because literally no run is ever the same because the snow conditions just change every yep. single run. Yeah. Yep. And there are just so many skills that have to go into it. There's so many different aspects that you have to get right and I just think that challenge is so, it's so cool and unique. Okay. So when you're learning this, because I'm guessing it wouldn't happen once you know what you're doing, do you yeah. cop a knee in the head, your own <laughs> knees in your head? Is that possible? Because I feel like it is. Uh, I haven't experienced that, but I mean, I wouldn't put it past some people. Yeah, because I just and your knee would come. At you. Second question to that: When you're um, in your car and you're driving over speed bumps, <laughs> do you not even feel them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they feel like nothing when you finish up the motor run. <laughs> <laughs> she could do 120 over a speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Didn't feel a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jakara, take us um, over to um, Beijing, and when. You, you just arrived there years before when you'd been in previous Olympics. You're just going out there for experience. I've just heard you say that before. But the weight of expectation, your own personal expectation, talk us through that. Yeah. <laughs> Was that too hard? Was that too hard of a question? Sean, once again, there's a line and you cross it. <laughs> I just, you know well, what I mean? I know well, so, so which part been... was it did you think was wrong by me? I think it was all of it. Okay. Yeah. I think it was the time. I think it was the delivery. And I think it was the content. <laughs> <laughs> the attitudes, the voice. Okay. Maybe I should go well, to we are. else next You know, time. I never knew it was such a divisive show. <laughs> Chikara, you back? <laughs> I'm back. Part right. three. <laughs> is, is somebody at your house having to pedal to keep the phone going? What's going on? Oh, it's what it seems like. I know. It certainly does. I know. We were wondering about the weight of expectation you yes. personally uh, you would have had on yourself. Yeah, so there's obviously, it's the Olympics, it's hyped up to be massive, but I know going in that all that I can do is focus on the things that I can control because it's just wasted energy to focus on all that other stuff. So really just staying composed and focusing on what it is that I need to do, which much easier said than done, but I really feel like I was able to achieve that at these games, which was massive for me because we've spent a lot of time, myself and my team, working on learning the skills to be able to do that. Now, Jakari, because you were the fastest qualifier, like you nailed every run, you were amazing, but it meant that you went last. Now, is that, I mean, you know how fast you've got to go, I guess, Mm. but also are the others carving the course up a bit? Yeah, it's a real privilege to ski last. It's a really cool spot to be, and the course does get a little more chewed up, but once you're kind of in those final rounds, we definitely train when there's been more runs on the course, yeah. so it's actually in better condition than we've trained still, which is really lucky. Yeah, okay. right. When you holiday, do you choose <laughs> yeah. 
cold holiday spots or warm holiday spots? Warm every time. (laughs) (laughs) It's a sore out. Really? Yeah. (laughs) So whereabouts do you kind of go then, Jakara? Where do you like to go then? Um... I love going up to Queensland, to the Sunshine Coast, and prior to the pandemic, we would do some holidays over in Southeast Asia, which is always a really incredible place for the world yeah. to experience. So and cold, no snow. So cold feels like work, does it? And warm feels like a break? A little bit, I guess. I just, you, when you're spending like six, seven months of the year in the cold, it's nice yes. to have a little break with some warm weather. Certainly would be, but yeah. you know, from uh, I guess from um, my point of view and our point of view, I guess um, we don't get a s- chance to spend uh, European winters and go to those mm. amazing places, Finland, Sweden, all those types of places. Yeah. Is, it, is that just old hat to you, just being over in Europe and <laughs> you know living there for most part of the year? No, it's it's so incredible every time I get to go to Europe and experience different countries, and I'm still so blown away by experiences that I get just through doing my sport. It's I'm so grateful for it. Hey, we know in Japan they had the cardboard beds, but I know that <laughs> Beijing brought it with the beds. Tell us about the beds that you had there. So we had beds. They had um, controls. I don't actually know what the beds could do. I didn't <laughs> test it out once. <laughs> Didn't you? What, like a like a hospital bed? Where yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a hospital bed, but I, I was just so caught up in everything else. I forgot to even try it. There was all you like don't want to be the, the athlete that gets caught in their yeah. bed. Yeah. You know? there, there was all different functions, like vibrating functions, yes. and like yeah. I think one was called infinity or something like infinity? that. Infinity. Yeah. Something what about like that beyond? Um, Jakara, obviously, it was big news um, uh, when your parents were interviewed post your race. And your dad said you can get a puppy. Now you're not home that often, so obviously they're going to be looking after the puppy. Have you? When, when are you getting the puppy? What's going on? Um, well, I'm not hearing any barking noises around here, so um, hopes that the puppy are dwindling. Oh, okay. He said it publicly. Yeah, that means you've got to follow through. I want to know what sort of what breed of dog does a gold medalist like? Ah. Uh, you know, I'd be pretty happy with any dog. I mean, a golden, a golden retriever. retriever. Yeah, yeah a golden <laughs> retriever. A, what about a, yeah, a, that'd a, be cool. a sausage dog? A nice long dog? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd take any dog. Oh, any Anything dog. at all. All right. Oh, and, nice. Jakara, just before we let you go, um, do you, are you going to be watching the performances of the rest of the Australians uh, for the next few days? You know, we've got some good hopes going on. Or are you, you going to turn off for a, for a moment or two? Oh, I was glued to the TV from the moment I walked in the door yeah, last right. night, seeing the half pipe and the port across. And yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty hard to rip me away from that. Yeah. Well, right. fantastic. Well, no, you like, did us proud, Jakara. Yes, as mogul experts, we couldn't fault <laughs> We know your that you've done yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. Thanks so much, good guys. Good stuff. No worries. Thank you, Jakara. Well played. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.